Welcome back, everyone. This is Frank DeMora, the author of the book, The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth, and the lead man for the End Times Research Ministry. I want to welcome you, first of all, to my YouTube channel and invite you to go over to my website where you can download my book today for free. It has all the current news that you need to see showing that we are definitely in the last days. This book has more proof that I know of any other book that is so current. I keep it current for you and, as I said, you can download it for free. Now, something is happening that is very, very important. And especially you need to listen to this if you don't know anything about Bible prophecy. But before I continue, if you're new and you just found my YouTube channel and you know nothing about my website, what you're looking at is a picture on the front page of my website. And if you want to download my book that I'm talking about, all you have to do is scroll down and you will see the link right here. It's in red. And you can see I'm updating my book as I can. And this current book is July the 8th of 2015. So it's very, very current. And of course, this is a free ministry. I ask nothing of my people. I don't ask for donations. I don't want anything except to preach the word of the Lord and to help get people ready for these last days and to receive Jesus Christ when he calls us. Now, what I'm going to share with you has to do with the Antichrist. It has to do with the warning Jesus gave to us about the Antichrist coming. So let me share some verses with you. Then I'm going to connect this information that the Lord gave to us in the Word to the current events and how important it is to know what the Word says and to understand what is happening when you see it live on television. So let me start off with Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. These are the words of Jesus now. Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming that I am Christ, and will deceive many. So the Lord told us one of the signs is that if somebody tells you that the Messiah is coming, or the Messiah is here, you're not to believe him. One of the reasons why we're not to believe this is because we know when the Messiah will be coming around that time period, which I will be showing you. But let's take another look at another verse here. Matthew chapter 24, verses 22 through 25. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So again, the warning of being not deceived. People are going to be saying that the Christ is coming. And not only that, but now he adds that we're going to see these miracles. And of course, they are going to be from a, a false Christ. And so these so these miracles, what they will be doing is deceiving people. Because many people who don't know what the Lord warned will see these miracles and think and believe that this is the Messiah. And so we know that the Lord says if it were possible to deceive even the elect. So that's why it's so important to know the signs, to be familiar with those signs, and to live your life knowing these signs. So let's move on, and we're talking about now the Antichrist coming and the sign of where he's going to come and, of course, the time period of which he is going to come. Look what Daniel tells us, 927. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Now, the he here is the Antichrist. He's going to make a covenant with many people around the world for a period of one week, but we know that after you study the Bible, you understand that this week is a period of seven years, and it's the last seven years that the Lord revealed to us in the book of Revelation. It's a time period that is not going to be a good time period for anybody. It goes on to say, and in the midst of the week, in other words, in the middle of that seven-year period, or exactly 1,260 days from the time that it starts, exactly 
half of it right in the middle this antichrist as again it says he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease in other words the jews are going to build their temple no question about it it will be the third temple now notice that it says that this man in the middle of the week he's going to stop the sacrifices well if you've been to my website i've shown you pictures where the jews especially at the temple mount institute are preparing the priest they're training the priest and they've been practicing and they've been given permission to do so by the Israeli government, practicing killing the lambs for sacrifices. This is how close we are. And the scripture goes on to say, And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So Antichrist will be going into the third temple, when is this going to happen? Well, we're, we know for sure when it's going to happen. And I'm going to get into that. Now, Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. This is where Jesus talks about what Daniel said, going back into the Old Testament. It says, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, and I put that in yellow so it stands out, in the holy place that he is talking about here, is the third temple whosoever readeth let him understand so if the people don't know this the people are ignorant of the word of the lord they're not going to understand what's going on and this is very very dangerous now this is probably one of the most important uh, in specific detailed information about when the Antichrist is coming. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Please, if you're ever going to pay attention to anything, pay attention to this warning by God given to Paul the Apostle, starting in verse 3. Let no man deceive you. So in other words, he is saying the same thing that Jesus already told us. Do not be deceived. Right out of the gun. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. And what day is he talking about? It's the day of the Lord. It's the day that the Lord is going to what? He's going to take the church out of the way so that the wrath of God can be poured out. Let me read this again. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except... Now look at this. There's two things that he tells us that have to happen. Definitely have to happen before the Antichrist comes. Now look at Or before he's revealed. And this is what it says. Except there come a falling away first. So that's number one. And the second thing is that man of sin be revealed so in other words when is this antichrist going to appear when is he going to be revealed well in the middle of the tribulation period 1260 days how do we know this because the lord told us in many other scriptures that the sun would be dark and the moon wouldn't give its light anymore and immediately after these things there was going to be silence in heaven for a span of a half an hour and then right after we see or could be right during that time period it is when the lord we see in that scripture sends out the angel to gather the elect when does that happen between the sixth and the seventh seal but let me go on and i'm going to show you the seals and explain that a little bit to you but let me go back to verse four who opposes and exalt himself above all that is called god or that is worship so that he as god now look at this sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god so in other words here we go again just like jesus said in matthew like jesus pointed to daniel about the temple this holy place and now again thessalonians antichrist sits in the temple he defiles and he stops the sacrifice in the middle of the tribulation period that's when he is revealed so how could the church leave before the revealing there's no way it has to happen the falling away first and that man of sin be revealed which takes place between the sixth and the seventh seal now here is a picture of the seals the seven seals and you can see in the sixth seal you'll see the heavenly signs 
And when you read it, you'll see that the sun goes dark, the moon doesn't give its light, and then immediately after, this is when we see the silence in heaven. You'll see below the seventh seal. And that's when the angel is sent out to, to gather the elect. So the gathering of the saints takes place again around the middle of the tribulation period. Now this is where people really get hung up because they think, well, the first seven seals is the tribulation, so the Christians should be gone by then. Well, the first seals, number one through seven, are tribulation, or if you will, wrath that is not coming from God. This wrath is coming from Satan on the world, Satan on the believers, Satan on anyone who believes in Jesus Christ. So that is a big difference between wrath coming from Satan and wrath from God. Now, after the seventh seal is broken and there's a silence in heaven for a half an hour, and then it says immediately after this, this is when the angel comes out, and obviously the church is in heaven at that time, and when that happens, then the wrath of God which is different from the wrath or the tribulation that will be coming, the wrath during those seven seals in the first three and a half years. So the church, after the seventh seal, obviously will be in heaven. The wrath of God is poured out, and then we see all the, the bowls and the vials and everything, uh, the trumpet judgments that are going to be coming that Christ warns about in the book of Revelation. So the, I guess the most important part that I'm trying to show you as far as the temple goes and the revealing of this Antichrist when this temple is built would be the man of sin three and a half years after he makes the covenant with many people. Now why is this so important? Why am I talking to you about the temple and why am I talking to you about false Christ and the warning about the false Christ? Let me show you an article that just came out a couple days ago you'll see why I'm giving you this information. Now, this is breaking news that came out of Israel July the 3rd, 2015. Look at the headline. Leading Israeli rabbi says the arrival of the Messiah is imminent. I'm going to let you hear the article, and then I'll come back and make the connection. Rabbi James Kanievsky, a leading authority in mainstream ultra-Orthodox Judaism has been giving clear and unequivocal messages recently that the coming of the Messiah is imminent. He is urging Jews to make Aliyah as soon as possible. Aliyah, the Hebrew verb for going up, refers to immigrating to Israel, which is seen as higher spiritual action that can help herald in the coming of the Messiah. It was reported that the Rabbi Kanievsky was presented with a pamphlet written by Rabbi Yitzchak ben Tzvi from the city of Bnei Brak. Dealing with the end of days and many other related prophecies, Rabbi Kanievsky, who is a pillar of the Jewish community and known for his authoritative books on Torah law, read the pamphlet carefully after a short consideration. He told those around him that the pamphlet needed to be distributed and that Jews living outside Israel should return to their ancestral land. In yet another instance of Rabbi Kanievsky's call for Aliyah, author Rabbi Yekudiel Fish revealed advice that was given to his cousin, a teacher at a prominent Lakewood yeshiva who visited Israel recently and went to Rabbi Kanievsky to receive a blessing at the end of his visit. The rabbi told him that he should not leave Israel because the Messiah would be arriving very soon. The teacher responded that he had 700 students waiting for him in Lakewood. Rabbi Kanievsky told him that he must bring all of the students to Israel. Upon his arrival in Lakewood, the story spread quickly, creating quite an impression on the students who all revere Rabbi Kanievsky. After a lifetime of immersing himself in classical Jewish texts, Rabbi Kanievsky's study partner informed various media sites that the rabbi is talking about the Messiah all the time since last summer's war in Gaza. The rabbi has been spreading this message of imminent return in one instance. Rabbi Kanievsky instructed a Jew from Argentina who asked for a blessing that he should gather your family and come to Israel, otherwise, there won't be enough room for you on the airplane. 
When asked about the timing of the Messiah's arrival, Rabbi Kanievsky answered, At the end of the sabbatical year, several people have asked the rabbi to verify this, and he has given the same answer each time. This year is the sabbatical year, and it will be ending on the 29th day of Elul, which by the Gregorian calendar, falls on Saturday, September 12, 2015. In answer to Rabbi Kanievsky's call, the Jews of France have begun to arrive in Israel in blessed roofs. The impetus is certainly a reaction to increasing anti-Semitic and Islamic-fueled violence across Europe. After the horrific terror attack at a kosher market in Paris six months ago, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu urged French Jews to come home to Israel. His remarks drew criticism from some, however, last week, in the wake of Ramadan violence in several countries including France, C. Vilkin, the Israeli Minister of Immigration and Absorption, called on French Jews to make Aliyah, echoing his leader's words, come home, anti-Semitism is growing. Terrorism is on the rise and the sickly ISIS activists carry out murders in the light of day. We are prepared to accept the Jews of France with open arms, he said. Last year, 7,000 French Jews made Aliyah to Israel, making it the number one country of origin for new immigrants. The Jewish Agency and the Ministry for Aliyah and Immigrant Absorption are expecting more than 3,000 French Jews to immigrate to Israel this summer, alone. Many of them families with children who want to arrive and integrate before the beginning of the school year. It should be noted that it is considered a positive trait to always be anticipating the Messiah, but Shafet's chaim, Rabbi Yisrael Mir Kagan, a great Torah sage, is told to have said that any time he heard a loud noise, he would say, Perhaps the Messiah has arrived. Similar stories have also been told of the leading Moroccan Karbalist, the Baba Sali, Rabbi Israel Abu Hasera. So now you know why I gave you this information about this Rabbi of Israel calling the people to get ready to receive their Messiah. Now the question is, are you going to believe what this Rabbi says? Because if you do, you're setting yourself up to be deceived. Matthew chapter 24, we see that Jesus tells us that people are going to say this. And he also shows us and tells us, do not believe it. Why? Why not believe it? Well, the Lord showed us when the Antichrist was going to be revealed. And if he can't be revealed until the middle of the tribulation, after the sixth seal, and when we see the seventh seal opening up in their silence in heaven. If he cannot be revealed until then, we know that Jesus will not be coming till at least the middle of the tribulation. And so any Christ that is supposed to be coming before this time, obviously, is going to be what? He's going to be a false Christ because Jesus specifically told us that the Antichrist has to be revealed first. And we know that three and a half years after the Antichrist is revealed, that is when Jesus Christ physically comes from heaven with the church back to earth. The Bible says in Revelation that every eye will see him. And so we know the time frame of when Jesus is coming back. We may not know the very day, but we do know the time frame of when Jesus is coming back. So if the rabbi is calling for the Messiah to be this eminent event, we know that it cannot be the true Messiah. Now, that being said, let me scroll down here for a second. I want to take a look at what they put up here from Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 34, because this is another part of prophecy, and it is already happening. Let me read this for you. It says, I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and with wrath poured out. And, of course, that's Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 34. So what this rabbi is doing is he's making the stand that the Messiah is coming very, very soon and for all the Jews to come back to Israel. 
before that happens. Well, we know that this prophecy has been in fulfillment because ever since 1948, May 14th of 1948, when Israel was born again as a nation again, we've seen Jews from the east, the west, the south, and the north coming back from their countries that they were living in, coming home to Israel to make their home in the motherland. And so this prophecy has been in the works. Now we do know that there will be more Jews coming back. And just recently, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, made a plea for the Jews to return home. And if you've been reading the news, for example, in France, there's a lot of persecution, there's a lot of threats, uh, killings going on in France against the Jews. So when the scripture says, as you can see here, an outstretched arm and with wrath poured out, we see that in part that's what's going on in many of the countries. We see it in France, we see it in Iraq, we see it in Iran, we see it in all those Middle Eastern countries that hate Israel and are persecuting the Jews and many of them are going home because of the wrath that's being poured out. Let me give you a short example that came out the news that the persecution of the Jews in France, this was by PBS, the News Hour, a new anti Semitism, why thousands of Jewish citizens are leaving France. Jewish tradition is strong here. This is one of many synagogues in France. Jews have been in this country for centuries, numbering 500,000 today. France as the largest Jewish population in Europe. But for the first time in their living memory, the Jews of this synagogue in central Paris are talking about leaving France, fearing what they call a new anti-Semitism. Lohan Layami says he is afraid that anti-Israeli sentiment has morphed into a wider, more dangerous anti-Semitism. If you have a, um, a David Stars over here, like you can have problems, or if you were a keeper, like uh, some people come comes to you and say, uh, uh, "You uh, bad Jews, we're gonna all kill you or put you on the sea," and uh, it's uh, it's frightening. In July, during Israel's war with Hamas, the synagogue was targeted by demonstrators who reportedly chanted "Death to Jews" as they attacked. These are images from inside the synagogue. A show of force from police ended the protest. Now this is the result, constant police protection. Jews have been coming to worship here at this synagogue for 50 years, but now they say they won't come unless the police are outside. And it's not just in Paris, in Sarcelle, a small community with a large Jewish population north of Paris, a peaceful pro-Palestinian march degenerated into violence against anything Jewish. Attacks like these have had a profound impact on the Jewish community. At the Jewish Agency in Paris, there has been a surge in applications for assistance to emigrate to Israel. So I'm going to stop it right there. If you want to see the rest of the video, you can just copy and paste that headline uh, at your site there, Google search, and you'll be able to watch that entire PBS news hour there. So. Here's the bottom line. It is happening. It is happening in our generation because of the wrath that's being poured out, Satan on the Jews. This the tribulation for the Jews, and it will continue and get much, much worse, and especially during the tribulation period. Prophecy right before us, and most of the world cannot make the connection because they haven't read the Bible, and they don't know how to make the connection of what to be looking for. Now, as I said in my book, I give you all the stats on the number of people leaving their own nations to come back to the homeland of Israel. And I would just wanted to show you just briefly the immigration to Israel in 2014. It's too early to tell how many people left so far in 2015. But as you can see here in France, in 2014, there were over 7,000 people. In Ukraine, close to 6,000 people. Russian Jews left the Baltic states, almost 5,000 people. The United States, 
little over 3,000 United Kingdom, 617 as you can see the rest of the nations. And you'll notice they're coming from exactly what the Lord prophesied in the text that I showed you, coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. The prophecy, again, being fulfilled in our generation. Now you have to understand if you know the word of the Lord, you'll see that when Jesus came the first time, the rabbis didn't believe Jesus. The Pharisees and the Sadducees did not believe that Jesus was who he claimed to be. When he said that I am, he was showing us and showing those Pharisees and the Sadducees that he was in fact I am or God. And we read many places in the scriptures that the Pharisees hated Jesus because he claimed this. And as a matter of fact, there was one case where the Pharisees asked him straight out, are you the Christ? And Jesus said, I am. And they understood what he was talking about when he said, I am. And that is just the name that God gave Moses in the Old Testament. When Moses said, who do I say that you are? And God said, tell him that I am that I am. So the Jews understood, those religious Jews understood that Jesus was claiming to be God and they were going to stone him, at least make an attempt to stone him. And obviously that couldn't happen because Jesus had to go to the cross. But let me read John 9, 36 through 41, making some connections here for you. This is what it is saying. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that it talketh with thee. Now, you have to understand what's going on here. Jesus had just healed a blind man. And this blind man was going to go up to where? He was going to go up to the Pharisees. Because they were looking for reasons to do away with Jesus. So, verse 38. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be blind. In other words, showing us the Pharisees saw Jesus. The Pharisees heard the word being poured out by God himself, but they were blind to it. They were blind to the first coming. In verse 40, And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see. Therefore your sin, look at this, remaineth. So even though that the Pharisees saw Jesus and they heard him, they were remaining in their sins because they didn't receive the message, the good news that Jesus was giving to them about the kingdom that it was come. And then the word about this the good shepherd, which was Jesus Christ, look at this. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. And as this is the temple, again, it's going to be rebuilt. The Antichrist is going to go in and stop the sacrifices. Of course, that temple that Jesus walked in here, in this scripture, that was torn down in 70 AD under Titus the Roman. In verse 24, Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And this is what I was showing you before. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So again, telling them straight out who he was, that he was God, and that these people would remain in their blindness, the shepherd was before him, and they refused him. And nothing has changed in Israel. 
the Pharisees, the religious people in Israel, still have a blind eye to the good news, a blind eye to the real Savior. And what's going to happen is the warning from Matthew 24 is going to finally come into fruition where this false Christ is going to come and the Jews are setting themselves up for the entrance of the Antichrist who they will believe that this man is their Messiah and then obviously three and a half years after this Antichrist man makes a covenant with many he is going to break that covenant as you see in the right hand side here he is going to go into the temple in the middle of that tribulation period and the Jews at that point are going to realize the huge mistake that they made believing that this man was their Messiah but the revealing of this Antichrist man does not happen until 1260 days after this covenant is confirmed right to the day 1260 days so since nothing has been confirmed yet you know automatically you have at least three and a half years before the Antichrist can be revealed so this message that I give today where this head rabbi is calling for the eminent return of the Messiah I'm warning the people again please do not believe it I know that many of you may be following this rabbi. Many of the Jews might believe this eminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ into Israel, but according to the specific details that Jesus has given us in his word, we know that this is not going to happen for at least three and a half years until the Antichrist is revealed to the world. Now that being said, part of the prophecies are going to be true obviously and what i mean by that is for example this ezekiel chapter 20 verse 34 when the jews are coming back this is what the lord told us this is what's happening so we see truth in the midst of this article but also deception setting up the jews to receive a false messiah now because they mentioned the Jews coming back from all over the world. In this article, I wanted to give you some other scriptures about the prophecy that the Lord told us that this was going to happen. And let me just start off with Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3, where it says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will bring my people Israel and Judah back from captivity and restore them to the land I gave their forefathers to possess, says the Lord. And this has already been fulfilled because the people from all over the world came back to Israel after it was restored in 1948. So Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 3 has already been fulfilled. And then let's take a look at Isaiah 43, verses 5 through 7. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, get them up. And to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I formed and made. So there you have the prophecies of Jesus, we know, is going to bring the people from all over the world, Jews, back into the homeland. It has already started. Millions of Jews have left different countries to come back to Israel. That prophecy has been fulfilled. Now I'm going to move on to another prophecy, and I'm keeping you up to date as much as I can daily at my website. And this one is breaking news, and the prophecy has to do with earthquakes. In Luke 21, 11, Jesus tells us this, And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and that is what's happening, and they're coming faster and faster. And if you go to my book, you're going to see every one of the quakes, the large quakes that we call the great earthquakes and anything from a 6.0 up. These are very, very strong earthquakes. So again, just like I've been warning, I put up the red flag some time ago and I said, you're going to see a, a lot of these quakes. They're gonna be coming faster. 
look at the report today of July 10th, 2015 from ABC News. A powerful earthquake rattled the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific on Friday, but officials said there was no tsunami threat and no immediate reports of damage or injuries. This was, when you take a look, a 6.5 magnitude quake. Now, let me go to my book and I want to show you just what's happened in the month of July. And of course, as I said, I monitor and I track and I put these earthquakes in my book so they could see how many and how close they are. Now the information in my book, as you can see here, starts in chapter 6 on page 181. Now I said I was going to show you just for July, but instead I want to show you the stats. So what's happened in the year 2015, when you take a look you'll see all of these quakes, 6.6, 6.8, 6.1. There's a lot of quakes taking place. Look at a 7.0. Here's another one here, a 7.5. These are massive earthquakes. It goes on and on. You had another one at a 7.8 hit Nepal in April the 25th of 2015. That was a massive earthquake. You had another one again. Look at the size of these quakes, 7.5, 7.1, 73, 6.8 that hit Japan. It goes on and on. You have another one here, 7.0. You have another one here, 7.0. And as I said, these are the birth paying signs of the last days. And I am going to update this and give you the latest earthquakes of the ones that I just showed you today that came out today which registered a 6.5 magnitude earthquake. Now I'm going to turn my attention to Ezekiel chapter 38 and in the Old Testament Ezekiel shows us in chapter 38 and 39 that there's going to be a massive war against Israel in the last days. And the reason why this war is going to be fought because nations are going to join together. You see them listed on the left-hand side. All of these nations are thinking that they're going to wipe out the nation of Israel. Now, one of those nations is Iran that will be joining forces with the leader, which is called Gog. And they are going to swoop down into Israel and with the idea that Israel is going to be finally wiped out. But what they don't understand is that God is going to intervene in that war and God is going to fight the war for the Jews. And the Jews will not be destroyed because God has his hand on the remnant of Israel and that nation will never be destroyed. God is always going to save the remnant of the Jews. Now, one of the things that I've been warning, as you can see here, this post on the left-hand side is one of the older posts that I had from this year, February 9th, 2015. And in this post, I one of the other warnings that I had given to you on February 9th was to watch what was going to happen between the United States and Iran when it came to the nuclear power talks. Let me show you something. I've been warning for years that the United States would do nothing to stop the Iranians from getting hold of a nuclear weapon. All that they were going to do was give them more time and when they set time limits for these talks with the Iranians, the time limit would come and it would go and it, all it did and all it was going to do and all it's going to do is set up the point where the Iranians will have a nuclear bomb to try to use it against the Israelis. Now what I've shown you here is some of my warnings in the past. You'll see November 23rd of 2014, September 14. That's right here in 2012, another one in 2013. But in these warnings I was showing you that Obama will do nothing to stop the Iranians except to give them more time to get their hands on this nuclear weapon that they've been working for. Now the reason why I gave you that information is because I'm going to bring you to today's news. 
And like I've been warning for the past six years, my warnings have come to pass again. Take a look at this article that came out from the is IsraelNationalNews.com with the headline, Iran talks extend over weekend amid death to Israel chance. I'm going to give you a portion of this article. I will have the link at my website. You could read the whole entire article, but it says this. Millions of Iranians took part in an annual Death to Israel Day in Iran on Friday. Ironically, coinciding with the twice extended, look at that, twice extended deadline for a deal on the Islamic regime's nuclear program that apparently will be extended yet again just like I've been warning as I said for the past six years they're extending it now there's a, a video that came out with Secretary of State John Kerry talking about this I want to play this for you because it is ridiculous that if you believe what he is saying let me show you this video now this article came from the BBC News and it says it was one hour ago Iran nuclear sheriff says powers changing positions. Watch this. If in the end we are able to reach a deal, it has to be one that can withstand the test of time. It is not a test of a matter of days or weeks or months. It's a test for decades. That's our goal here. And the simple fact is that despite all of the progress that we have made, and it's real, now, keep in mind, he's talking about this progress. Nothing has happened in six years. Nothing. The Iranians are still building their nuclear plant. They're getting these centrifuges set up, and nobody has stopped them. So there hasn't been any progress at all in this. Some of the tough issues remain unresolved. And that is, the Iranians just won't stop. But he won't tell us the truth. We know that difficult decisions don't become easier over time. And one way or the other, those decisions must be taken very soon. And they've been saying the same thing for six years. That is precisely why all of our delegations remain hard at work here in Vienna. And it's why a number of my counterparts returned last night and are here now so that we can continue to push through on the tough issues and ultimately see whether or not the good deal that we have been working for so hard is possible to achieve. And when Israel is threatened by Iran and God says Israel is going to be attacked by Iran, what does that tell us? There's not going to be any deal. We know war is coming. And that war will be the Ezekiel chapter 38 war, of which Iran and the rest of those allies that join up with Gog in Ezekiel 38 and 39 will be destroyed by God. So if you want to believe what your government is telling you about the nuclear stoppage on Iran, you go ahead. But it is not true. They're not going to stop Iran. I would be completely blown away if the United States began to go in there militarily to try to stop Iran. I don't see that happening at all. Now here's another section from that report. It says, according to the press TV, the rallies calling for the destruction of Israel are taking place in Tehran and over 770 towns and cities across the country. The Iranian Fars News Agency reports that millions of Iranians are taking part in the protest around the country. So again, it just shows you that what God told us in Iran, they're making it happen. This is the prelude to the attack that we see prophesied in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. And in the map on the left, you'll see the countries that are going to be attacking Israel all at the same time in the hopes of destroying Israel. But as the word tells us, God is going to sanctify his own name when he goes down and defeats these massive armies, millions of people invading into Israel or trying to invade into Israel. 
and they will be killed in the mountains before they get there by God and then the world hopefully will understand at that point if they don't believe it now of the warning that he gave to us that they'll believe and see it firsthand how God had intervened in Israel's defense and in finishing off this video and this post for today I want to draw your attention to this publication that I put out it's July 7th of 2015 now in this post I talked about the Supreme Court's ruling to establish same-sex marriage in all of the states in the United States. And I recommend that you listen to this video because I compare the agenda of the gay community to ISIS. And you really have to listen to what I said. ISIS is a murdering faction that is sweeping towards the Middle East right now and the gay movement or the gay agenda does not kill anyone but they are sweeping just like ISIS is sweeping over the rights and forcing people to do things that they don't want to do or things that they don't believe in so they have a lot in common and this is why I put up this video to show you what's happening because the agenda of the gay community is to push forward, to keep pushing forward. Even though now, supposedly the Supreme Court has ruled for 50 states, that's not good enough. Now it's time to jam it down your throat to anybody who doesn't agree or tries to put roadblocks in front of them. So I need to read Luke chapter 17 verses 26 through 30. And it says this, And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, and they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now we know from this video that I showed you with the scriptures when the Antichrist is going to be revealed. In the middle of the tribulation, after the breaking of the sixth and the seventh seal, and after the silence in heaven for a half an hour, that's when the Lord Jesus Christ comes for his church. So in verse 30 it says, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now keep in mind, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, at when the seal, sixth seal is broken and the sun doesn't shine anymore, the moon doesn't give off its light, this world, planet Earth, is going to be in darkness. And when the Lord comes back at this time for his church, everything is going to light up as bright as we can't even imagine how bright it's going to be. But everybody will see the Lord Jesus Christ, the day that Jesus will be revealed to take us home and then those that are of the quality or the characteristics of Noah's generation and Lot's generation, we know that Lot's generation was full of homosexual activity just like it is now and the Lord said it was going to be that way again. When the Lord takes us home, these people will be left behind to deal with the Antichrist and the wrath of God now being poured out on the people who chose to go a different direction than the salvation through Jesus Christ. And it's going to be a horrendous time period like this world has never seen before. So there's two important things we can take away from the scripture. Number one, we know that our generation would be a carbon copy of Noah and Lot's generation, as you can see from the Supreme Court. And when you read my book, you'll see other countries that are turning over to same-sex marriage. We have become the generation of Lot and Noah. Again, just like the Lord prophesied. And we know that the revealing of the Son of Man will come when he did what? Well, obviously in Luke 17, 26 through 30, he gives us two examples. Noah, uh, when the Lord sealed him in and shut the door on that day when the flood started, they were safe. 
that were taken away from the destruction of the world by the flood. In Lot, when the angel came and told Lot to get out of the city, take your family and get out, they did this and they were saved the very hour that the destruction, this fire and brimstone, came down on Lot. And the Lord is revealing to us in the same way it's going to happen again. So, just like in the days of Noah and Lot, and the breaking of the sixth seal, when, the, as I said, the sun doesn't give off its light and the moon goes dark, that's when the Lord comes back, the revealing of our Messiah. And I'm praying that you will see this for what it is because the agenda of the gay community is pushing forward as much as they can to drive this down anybody's throats who doesn't believe the way they want you to believe and force you to believe this way and they're using the government to do it. Now today somebody sent me a email and it had a video. And in this video, you can see here, all you have to do is do a Google search and you could put in the heading, Denied Marriage License in Moorhead, Kentucky, and uh, Rowan County. And this video will show up. And let me just give you the background about it, if you don't want to go and watch it. These two gay men, they go into the courthouse for one purpose. They want to force the court in Kentucky to give them a marriage license they use cameras to go in there to show everybody what they're doing and the reason why they did this is because they want to force it upon the the county to give them marriage certificate so that they can get married and of course the these gay men were denied now when you watch this video they stay in this office they just walk through the door and they stay away from the counter for a good five minutes four or five minutes just standing there. Now, a normal person, when they walk into an office, if there isn't anybody at the counter, because there's more than one person at the counter, they would walk up to the counter and say, hi, we're here for such and such, but they didn't do anything. All they did was walk in and stay there talking amongst themselves and somebody was filming them and they said, well, you know, it's been whatever, it's been a long time and nobody's even asked you anything. Well, if you don't have enough brains to walk over to the counter and ask what you're looking for, I mean, come on, it's a no-brainer. But the person, but it's obvious, all they're doing is they want film to show that nobody's helping them. I can't help if the the people are idiots that can't even walk up to the counter and get some kind of attention. Just stand there at the door with your arms crossed thinking that somebody's going to leap over the counter, you know, walk 15 feet towards you and say, can I help you? In any case, to make a long story short, they are denied the marriage license. They're told that they can go someplace else in the county to get this marriage license. They're not doing them there yet. So it's not good enough. They wanted to put this on YouTube, obviously, and just filter it out to as many people as they can, pushing the agenda. And that's how I made the analysis between ISIS and the gay movement, because they're both steamrolling over people who disagree with them, and they want everybody to be like they are. And if you're not, too bad. There's no question we're going to hear a lot more about the, the gay agenda in the coming years because the Lord told us that we were going to have tribulation. And part of the tribulation will be coming from the gay community who is tr trying, obviously, to stop Christians from saying anything about them in regards to same-sex marriage or regards to their lifestyle. But we should expect this. We should definitely expect this to happen and it's going to happen faster and faster because the Lord showed us in Mark 13 8 as I mentioned many many times the birth pangs of the last days now when you look at this video the only thing that I want to interject here is this as Christians and I always do this as Christians it's our job to love everybody we got to have the heart of God and God loves everybody, but people make decisions that could either send them to hell or to heaven. And it is our responsibility to at least tell them about the gospel and what happens. 
And if they deny that, well, it's up to them. They're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. But to hate anybody, no, that's not our lifestyle. No, that's not the road that Jesus took. And that's not the road we're to take. We're to love the people but hate the sin. And for some people that's very hard to do, but that's the road that we need to be taken. So as you can see, there's many things uh, in Bible prophecy that are taking place, much more than I can give just in an hour. But for now, this will do. And if you've watched this video, please let everybody know about my website, how they can get my free book. And hopefully we'll reach out to more people for the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for the gay community. They need it. But not just the gay community. Pray for the people who are alcoholics, the rapists, the, those that are sucked into pornography, general sin. And without the Lord Jesus Christ and without repentance, all of the people in those categories of sin will end up in the lake of fire. They will end up in the tribulation period. And that's what we don't want to see happen. All we could do is work for the Lord, pray, and love people like this. God bless.